Do you find yourself avoiding hot drops entirely? Do you always die when you hot drop? Do you always lose 50-50s? I get it, hot dropping isn't easy. Let's break down how the top pros are able to hot drop and win every single time. You ready? Let's get into it. 72 Hours is hot dropping tilted towers and flies straight to Trump Tower. He sees one enemy land on the roof and the other scuff the landing. So 72 Hours swoops in and claims the top floor for himself. He opens a chest and makes a great move. He walls off a player beneath him and builds a cone on top of him before drinking shields. This way, he has plenty of time to react to the player above and below him. He makes his way down, farming mats and searching for loot. The second he hears footsteps, he jumps out to the side. His enemies have been tracking his movement, so dropping down will cause confusion. You should consider pushing aggressively when you have full shields. Your opponent might have no shields or time to loot. 72 Hours is immediately rewarded. He hears footsteps next to him, so he opens the door, fires, and claims kill number one. He builds right after to protect himself. Always do this when you're hot dropping. Prioritize your safety at all times. Every high level player does, so you should too. He hears more footsteps above and he makes his way up. He finds the player right away and destroys him in two shots. 72 Hour pops a mini and runs out into the wild. This is when things get spicy. He finds a player to his right and lasers him for kill number three. He finds another player ramping overhead and wipes him out with a single pump. 72 Hours moves down and he hears another player farming and takes him out with a ridiculous headshot. Three kills in 25 seconds? Not bad. 72 Hours is an aggressive player with an incredible aim. He almost always shoots before he builds. Take a hint from 72 Hours. Play aggressively until given a reason to play defensively especially during a hot drop. A fourth player snipes at him from the clock tower and gets obliterated by a sick pre-aim. If you know where your enemy is going to peek from, then you can easily challenge them. 72 Hours does this all the time and the results speak for themselves. Let's jump forward and find 72 Hours at the double L's. Two players are fighting and he makes his way over. He grapples up and he lands a great shot. Then he plays the angle. 72 Hours is the master at playing angles and low ground. You might think to build here, but 72 Hours is pre-aiming his opponent like a hawk. When his opponent jump peaks, 72 Hours is ready and he claims the kill. Now watch him high ground peak perfectly. He's playing the angles again. He's dipping in and out of sight. By doing this, he's baiting out shots and playing unpredictably. Once he breaks his opponent's shield, he drops in for the kill. This is an 8 kill high drop performance by one of the best players in the game. He barely built any walls. Surviving and dominating hot drops isn't about building. It's about positioning, calculated aggression, and aim. There are three takeaways from this clip. Choose the best landing spot. Land at a spot when you're uncontested, even if it's just a single floor in a house. Protect yourself at all times. Prioritize avoiding damage over dealing damage. Third parties are a huge threat. Play to your loadout. When you have full shields, taking early fights isn't a bad idea. To hop drop like a pro, let's learn from Tifu and Ninja. Tifu is seemingly flying in with half of the lobby. He sees two players land on the roof, so he chooses to land at the front door instead. Landing at the front door is a major advantage because you can loot quicker. He's rewarded with an epic pump and he hears footsteps above him. He pushes and one pumps a player for kill number one. Tifu uses every second well by farming furniture and he hears another player on the roof. He makes his way up and he blasts the player with two huge shots. Both of these players didn't have a chance. He didn't hesitate at all and he pushed quickly. You need to start being decisive when you hot drop. Take advantage of vulnerable players. Don't give them a chance to think. Tifu moves to the next house and he hears a player pickaxing the roof. He peeks through the window and connects on a headshot. Again, Tifu doesn't hesitate. When players aren't ready, they're sitting ducks. Go find them before they find you. Let's watch Ninja perform another hot drop. Ninja flies into tilted towers and chooses to land smack dab in the middle. Landing in the middle of a hot drop zone has its pros and cons. The good is that you can rotate anywhere. The bad is that anyone can rotate on you. Ninja veers off the last second for the pump instead of the chest. The pump is one of the best weapons in the game, so always go for it. You have no idea what could be in the chest. It could be a bolt action. It could be anything. 
The pump is a guaranteed early game weapon. There's also no gunfire or footsteps near Ninja, so he's free to loot and farm everything. By the end of it, he's full shields and has a complete loadout. He still isn't rushing a fight. He's farming every wood pallet in the area. Early game materials are a major advantage because most players don't farm enough. You need to prioritize farming when given the chance. You're wasting time if you're not farming. Ninja hears fighting in Trump Tower and catches a glimpse of a player running through. He makes great use of dynamite to clear out the second floor. Explosives are extremely valuable when players don't have materials, so take advantage of that. His opponent has nowhere to hide now and gives his position away by pickaxing. Ninja breaks through and finishes the player with a single shot. Ninja is known to be an extremely aggressive player, but that doesn't mean he always goes in guns blazing. He was given the luxury of time and he used it. He farmed while waiting to third party and he picked up a free kill. This is a safe approach to a hot drop and it works. Let's go back to Tifu and watch a traditional hot drop. Tifu is flying into his homeland, Westworld. There are at least three players on screen and one player is landing within arm's reach of Tifu. The other player has a clear advantage to the AR. Many players would try to fight for the AR anyways, but Tifu chooses a better alternative. He changes direction at the last second. He finds a P90 and he cleans up the kill. You need to improvise like Tifu. If your hot drop plan A is destined to fail, then don't follow through. You guys are nodding your head in agreement, but I know that you would have went for the AR. Choosing the correct spot to land is half the battle of a hot drop. Tifu chooses to banish once instead of full healing because he hears players around him. Tifu prioritizes third partying over 20 health. It's the right choice. You don't have to play scared when you're able to third party. He pops out of hiding and sprays a player with his P90. He takes a gutsy AR fight right after. This isn't a great choice by Tifu. He stood out in the open and could have easily been killed, but he's rewarded for committing. When you commit to a play, you're more likely to succeed, even if it's the wrong play. So make a choice and go for it. This is your traditional 50-50 hot drop landing. Tifu was dead to rights until he made a quick turn and found a P90. Some would call it luck, but it was a calculated risk. Even if there was no weapon there, he gave himself a chance and the rest was out of his hands. These were three quick examples of different hot drop methods. We saw Tifu at Pleasant Park land at the front door rather than the roof and push aggressively with this epic pump. Ninja chose to land in the middle of Tilted Towers and took his time farming materials. He intelligently waited and took a smart fight, knowing that he would likely win. And finally, Tifu took a 50-50 and came out on top because he didn't risk it all for a great AR. These are three very important lessons that you need to carry with you whenever you hot drop. Let's tie everything together with the full hot drop analysis of TSM Daekwon. We're back at Tilted Towers with Mr. W Key himself. He flies straight into a terrible 50-50. Daekwon makes a break for it, but is chased down. He still can't find a weapon, so he begins playing hide and seek. Watch his movements. He's making sharp pivots and random turns. It's actually a lot harder to hit him than you think. His opponent makes a beeline for the chest and Daekwon again can't pick up the weapon. It's Hail Mary time. Daekwon begins hacking away and somehow picks up the kill. This right here is the essence of a 50-50 hot drop. Do what you need to do to survive. Let's jump forward a bit. Daekwon is healed up and is being pushed. He doesn't want to dance around and play corners. He wants to fight. He drops two boom boxes to fish out his opponent and hits him with the double bob. He's not done yet. The boom boxes collapse the building and there's another player in his face. In true Daekwon fashion, he hits him with another bop bop. Aggression pays off. Forcing a fight on a player that's playing slow pays off every single time. In true tilted fashion, it's not over. He shot from the east and covers up the hill. Once he's healthy, he pops out to claim the free kill and some loot. Daekwon hears another player above him and begins playing for high ground. He pushes up with the cone edit, but then suddenly turns right. Deception is the best way to win high ground. You don't need to build as fast as lightning if your opponent has no idea where you are. Daekwon makes a 180 and gets stinked. He covers up and instantly ramp tunnels toward Trump Tower. Note that he's now connected to Trump Tower, meaning that he has a very strong foundation. He can easily ramp push now and win high ground. Daekwon maintains at least one tile of high ground while pressuring. Daekwon as a player prioritizes dealing damage over building. He's very similar to Ninja. You can see it here. He shoots instead of building. Daekwon ends up under his opponent's ramp, but he's not scared. Look at what he's doing. He's pre-aiming. Edit, edit, I dare you. Make sure you do the exact same thing. 
the player that pre-aims better in this situation has the advantage. The player editing doesn't always have the advantage. Daquan wins the trade and begins pressuring from low ground. He connects on a big shot and begins pushing in. He ramps out, breaks builds, but wait, did his opponent just fall? This player didn't expect Daquan to pressure from low ground. As a result, he panicked and fell to his death. We saw elements of 72 Hours, Tifu, and Ninja in this clip. And guess what? You'll see these elements in every single hot drop. Make the best out of every situation. Daquan lost a 50-50 drop, but still manages to win. We saw Tifu do this at Westworld, but let's admit it, Daquan did it with style. Just like Ninja, he farmed for mats and heals before looking for more fights. Force your opponent to fight you. Daquan's opponent wanted to play slow and peek corners. Daquan forced him in a direct confrontation. Fight with your brain before you depend on mechanics. Daquan made multiple great decisions during this fight. He used deception, connected his buildings to Trump Tower, and played aggressively. Hot dropping isn't easy. Tifu didn't dominate every hot drop right away. He took it step by step, secured the landing, cleared the area, and played smart. If you don't have the advantage, then don't run in head first. Let your enemies play into your hand. This is Keith Allen. Thanks for watching. If you want to connect with me personally, I love to hear from you on Instagram. And if you want to get better at Fortnite, check out ProGuys.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.